Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by Peace Garage. In this video, we're going to pop some of the mysteries about blown head gaskets. Now, in my first video about how not to get ripped off about head gaskets, we talked about the parts of the engine, head gasket, valve cover gasket, the cylinder head, the valve cover, the block, the pistons, and how they all work together. Now we're going to talk about tests that are done to determine whether or not you have a blown head gasket or how it can be narrowed down. We're going to talk through some diagnostic tools and then we're actually going to do the tests. Now the first test that can be done on the engine is called a cylinder pressure test. Okay, And it's done with a tool like this. This is just a hose with a screw on it that goes inside the spark plug hole. There's a check valve in here so that this will hold the maximum pressure produced inside the cylinder. And there's a gauge. The gauge measures pressure in pounds per square inch. And there's metric in here. It's kilograms per centimeter. So uh, per cubic centimeter? No, per centimeter. Okay, So it can be metric or English PSI. You just screw this in the spark plug hole and it tells you how much pressure is produced inside the cylinder. But what does that really mean? I'm going to use this balloon to simulate what happens. Now, you, you put the tester in the spark plug hole and you turn the engine around and the gauge goes up, right? I'm going to blow this up. Good thing I don't pass out, right? Okay, so then the pressure gets uh, Pressure gets set on the gauge, and let's say we pump it up like that, and let's say it reads, it says PSI there, and let's say it reads 80. You got 80 PSI in a cylinder, so your cylinder is producing 80 PSI, you're thinking, hmm, that's pretty good. Well, what if the specification is it should produce 100 to 105 pounds? That means your cylinder is not producing the pressure it should be. And what does that mean? It could be a lot of things. It could be a blown head gasket, but it also could be a cracked or leaky intake valve, cracked or leaky exhaust valve. You could have a cracked cylinder head. You could have a cracked um, piston wall. You could have a, uh, leaking rings. You could have a cracked or leaking piston. You could have a crack or a hole in your piston. So there's a lot of things that the cylinder pressure test can tell you, and that's just one of the tests. The next test is called a leak down test, and it's done with a different tool like this. This is a leak down test tool, and it works very similar except it measures what the leak rate is in the cylinder, how much it's leaking. Now, here's a surprise for you guys. Everything leaks. Nothing is 100% sealed. Everything leaks. Your tires leak. The faucets in your house leak. Everything leaks. Okay, the question is, how much does it leak? Now, in your house, the water faucets don't leak because the leak rate is less than the size of a molecule of water. So if the leak rate is less than a molecule of water, it's not going to leak water. Uh, a cylinder, it's going to leak. A valve, an air valve, everything leaks. It's just a matter of how much. And this can tell us how much it leaks. Now, once this works a little different. This works is different because you put pressure in the cylinder then you measure how much it's leaking down. That's why it's called a leak down test. And I'm going to simulate that with this balloon here. Now, how many of you guys think I can take this pin and stick it in this balloon without popping it? Well, you can do it. As long as you don't pop it on the outside part here where all the pressure is, where this is high tension, you can do it. Now watch. First, first I'm, I, this is all filled up, okay? So let's say you have it hooked up to your cylinder and we put 100 PSI in there. Let's say this is filled up to 100 PSI. We're going to make a leak. I'm going to put it in, this, in the stem here. I'm going to put some holes in here. See that? I can put this pin in the balloon without it busting. And yes, I'm worried about it blowing up. You can also do it in the end here. This part right here that's, that's uh, really thick. There's not much pressure here. So, there you go. So there, if you don't believe me there, look. The pin is inside the balloon. So you can put a pin in a balloon without popping it. So now I have a hole here and I have some holes down here in the stem. I originally filled it up to 100 PSI and now it's leaking. And if I were to hold this long enough or push it long enough, it would leak down to zero. If I were to hold pressure in there, I would know how much air I have to replace in order to keep this full. Now what does that do? That will tell us something different. By knowing the leak rate, and knowing where it's coming from, we can pinpoint exactly what is wrong with the engine. So let's take these tools, we're actually going to perform these tests, and we're going to see the results, and potentially what could be causing a problem. 
All right, so first, what are some of the warning signs you can look out for yourself? You open up your hood and look at your engine. First, take off your oil cap. Look inside your oil cap. If you see milky white oil inside here, anything milky white, it could be a blown head gasket. It could also be a cracked head. It also could be a cracked block. You don't know, but at least that's a warning sign you can look for. Second, pull out the dipstick. Look at the oil. Does the oil look like oil? Is it black or is it milky white? If you have milky white oil way down in your oil pan, then you have water or coolant, something leaking into the oil, emulsifying, turning it into a milky, milky kind of looking fluid. Another sign. Look at your reservoir. Now if you have a radiator cap, you can look at take off your radiator cap. If you don't have a radiator cap, like in newer cars, you have a reservoir for your coolant. And you take off the cover for the coolant. And you look inside and look to see if that looks alright. Does it look like coolant or does it look like, it look like it's mixed with something else? You turn the engine on and you look at the reservoir. If it's bubbling, it doesn't mean that the coolant is boiling. It means it's possible that if you have a blown head gasket, the pressure from the cylinder is filling the coolant reservoir, or fulfilling the coolant cavity, and pushing air back through to the reservoir, and it's just bubbling air, like, like a uh, bottom of a fish tank with air bubbling. It's doing the same thing. You have air, the cylinders are producing air pressure, pushing it into the coolant system, and it's bubbling in your reservoir. So that could be another sign that you have a blown head gasket. It also could mean a cracked head. It could mean a couple different things, but somehow air pressure is getting into your coolant system. I'll put that back on. Always make sure you tighten all your covers for your fluids fully, the way it recommends, and it locks. Now you could have this the um, PCV system, post crankcase ventilation system. If that fails, that can stop pulling out the fluids and sometimes that can cause milky white substance in your oil. But those are the main things you can check yourself to see if you have a problem. Now let's do the tests. Now that's my brand new car. I don't want to take apart the, few, uh, the uh, spark plugs and do the tests on that because I have to disable the fuel system and it would throw codes and I don't want to screw up a brand new car. So we're going to do all these tests on my Cobra engine. A lot more fun. Now the first test I'm going to do here is our cylinder pressure test. I have this screwed into the number one cylinder and we're going to turn this over and see how much pressure is produced in the cylinder. It should be about 170 psi is good for this particular engine. And we'll crank it over and see what happens. And it produced 100, 176, a little bit more than that. So this cylinder pressure is producing cylinder pressure. We, we know that everything is working well. The valves are sealing, the head sealed, rings are working well. So we know the cylinder pressure is good. And I can exhaust it just by pushing it just like that. Now I can take, it, take this off and we'll do the other test. Now we'll do the cylinder leakage test. And it's done a little different. I have my piston number one at top dead center. That's the one I'm testing. And I have the fitting screwed into there. This is the gauge. I have air coming in. It's set at just about 92, 94 psi. And we're at a set right here on my cylinder leakage. Now, when I connect this to the cylinder, we're going to see how much leakage is actually going through the cylinder. And the purpose of doing this is to hear where it's leaking. If I hear leakage out of the intake, I have a leaky intake valve. If I hear leakage into my exhaust system, I have a leaky exhaust valve. If I hear leakage into the crankcase or pressure into my, um, uh, through my dipstick tube, I have uh, leaky rings. Or if I have all the spark plugs out and I hear leakage into number two cylinder, I have a blown head gasket. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, it comes up and you can see 20%, less than 20% leakage. I can hear air. And right now, it looks like it only, it's not the intake. Not any exhaust. That is pure leakage past the piston rings, which means this cylinder is good. No head gasket issues. Not leaking into the next cylinder. Great test results. Now one last thing. If you have your head gasket replaced, the question is, do you need to have the cylinder head machined? The answer is maybe. Now just like everything leaks, Nothing is perfectly flat. There are tolerances for flatness on a cylinder head. 
and that can be measured in a shop if the uh, mechanic has the right tools to measure it they can they have to know what the tolerance is first for flatness now if you have your head gasket replaced and they said I'm just gonna send the heads out to be re to be resurfaced don't let them do it because it's expensive and if it's not necessary why do it that's why you have a gasket the gasket makes up for variations in the surface waviness so this doesn't have to be perfectly flat flat within six inches it might be out of three four thousandths over the the whole surface of that cylinder head so it doesn't all have to be resurfaced so don't let them say well we have to have it resurfaced just verify that somehow because uh, it's expensive like I said and you don't want to have it done for no reason at all make sure it needs it so there you have more information about blown head gaskets the diagnostic tools and how they're used to diagnose whether or not it is a blown head gasket remember the more you know the more comfortable you're going to be when, when someone is telling you a mechanic is telling you you have a blown head gasket you have more confidence in the test they say they did you understand what they're talking about and the more you know the less chance you have of getting ripped off Thanks for stopping by Pizza Garage.